<laughs> wow, this is shocking. No pay for members of Congress? White House is worried about this one. So U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, he just put his foot down and told the FBI, produce the documents of the whistleblower that links President Biden to a pay-to-play scandal when he was still serving as the country's VP or else. Now here's a question. Will the FBI provide it? Now according to them, the information is already available to the public. Now I wonder where it is. Tesla CEO Elon Musk admits that he made a huge mistake with the mass layoffs in Twitter with him saying that if some of these ex-employees aren't mad, he's ready to rehire them. Them. What the heck is going on here? Now, a new bill has been introduced that aims to cut pay for members of Congress if the U.S. defaults. That's quite an idea. Good luck getting that thing passed. Do you guys think that they would actually get serious if their pay was at risk? Now, Paul Whelan, the former U.S. Marine who was wrongfully detained in Russia back in 2018, he's pushing the Biden administration to move faster for his release. I mean, the poor guy's been sitting over there five years already. To this day, critics still think that the wrong person was exchanged for the merchant of death. What do you guys think? People in the White House have a lot of thinking to do as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. seems to be the real deal as he's already shown of taking a chunk, a huge chunk out of the Democratic voters who used to support the president. Keyword being used to support him. Do you guys think that RFK stands a chance against President Biden? Let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's get right into the updates. Also, for the very best way to invest in gold or silver, check out the links down below in the description of this video. So I got a question. Do you guys remember the subpoena that was issued by the House Oversight Committee to get a file from the FBI? FBI regarding a whistleblower that links then Vice President Joe Biden to an alleged criminal scheme, which by the way, involve payments for any policy decisions. Now, this isn't about Hunter Biden, mind you. It's supposed to be proof that President Joe Biden had a bigger role with their family's business dealings with other countries like China, Mexico, Russia, and Ukraine. Now, to date, the document hasn't been provided by the FBI, which has led to the U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy getting in contact with FBI Director Chris Wray. You had a call with FBI Director Christopher Wray on Friday. You know that uh, James Comer has a subpoena out for the document that he wants to see. Are you going to be able to get that document? What went on with your call with the director of the FBI? Well, I want to be very clear with the FBI director that Congress has a right and we have the jurisdiction to oversee the FBI. This is one piece of paper that a chairman of a committee has requested to see. He hasn't even acknowledged whether he has this document, but he hasn't even provided it. I explained to the director that we will do everything in our power and we have the jurisdiction over the FBI that we have the right to see this document. Mm. I believe after this call, we will get this document. Any thoughts on this, guys? Now, if and only if the FBI actually has this document, why are they hiding this from us? I guess we can only speculate at this point, right? Now, speaking of speculations, a lot of that is swirling around with the possibility of President Biden facing off with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., as some voters are calling for a debate between the two for the president to prove that he can still carry the Democrats by 2024. Now, even though the White House hasn't talked about it, RFK, he looks to be a contender as three separate polls have already shown that he's receiving at least 20% of support among Democrats. Now, the consistency shows that a huge chunk of Democrats see him as a possible replacement for the president, something that Biden's administration will have to face sooner or later. RFK is a very controversial person to begin with, especially with his anti-vaccine stance. Now, he's also had some pretty strong words when it comes to his own party. According to him, quote, the Democratic Party at this point has become the party of war, which we've never been before. We've sent $113 billion to the Ukraine and an entire budget of e EPA $12 billion and the budget at the CDC is $12 billion in addition. I think a lot of Americans are feeling like they're tired of the forever wars. They're tired of this being a warfare state abroad and a surveillance state at home. And they want to get rid of the surveillance here and the wars abroad, end quote. Now, with all that being said, do you guys think that President Biden will actually hold a debate against him? How do you see that unfolding? Do you think that President Biden can even handle a debate? Now, a new bill has been cooked up by members from both parties that aims to block members of Congress from getting paid if the United States enters default or if the government shuts down. Lawmakers are pushing a bipartisan bill that would block members of Congress from getting paid if the U.S. defaults on its debt or the government shuts down. Now, this comes as the default deadline quickly approaches. Democratic Representative Abigail Spanberger and Republican Representative Brian Fitzpatrick introduced the No Pay for Congress during Default or Shutdown Act today. The bill is designed to motivate legislators to prevent a debt limit breach or a lapse in federal funding. 
<laughs> Wait, now I've been asking this in multiple videos now. Do you guys remember what would happen if their paychecks or their payments were delayed? Would they work faster? Are they listening to my videos? Because they seem to be taking action. Because I'm pretty sure that they don't want to miss out on their paychecks. But in all honesty, pretty sure that they can afford to miss a few checks. I mean, every last one of them is like a multimillionaire. I mean, they're only making like $200,000 a year. So, you know, that's not really breaking their bank. Man, maybe I should get into politics because I had this idea a long time ago. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, you guys. I am not interested in that but it would be pretty cool for this bill to be introduced. It's called the No Pay for Congress During Default or Shutdown Act. It's a long title, but kind of gets the point across. And it's supposedly a way to motivate legislators to get a move on with this debt limit debate. Now, I guess, you know, if those on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and, and even our veterans can be scared into thinking that the benefits will be affected, then I guess it's only fair for those who continue to kick this can down the road to ultimately suffer the same fear, right? But who are we kidding? These guys make a whole lot of money compared to us. A few delayed paychecks won't hurt them as bad as it would hurt us. Maybe if they were told that they wouldn't be reelected, maybe that would change their tune. But what do you guys think? Is it a good idea? Or is there something else that could be done that's better than that? Now, on that note, I really hope that more can be done for Americans overseas, especially for the guys like Paul Whelan. The former U.S. Marine is serving a 16-year prison sentence in Russia, of all places. And with the Merchant of Death being exchanged for WNBA star Brittany Griner, it looks as if we don't really have a comparable trading candidate for Whelan. He's trying to stay upbeat about it though, saying, quote, I remain positive and confident on a daily basis that the wheels are turning. I just wish that they would turn a little bit more quickly, end quote. Whelan's hopeful that he, together with other Americans who are stuck overseas, can be soon sent home so long as our government works for it. Any thoughts from you guys? And since we're talking about work, billionaire Elon Musk has accepted that he made a mistake when he fired Twitter employees and are now looking to rehire some of them. So here's what he said during a recent CNBC interview, quote, in desperate times, desperate measures are called for. Unfortunately, when you do it too quickly, some innocent people may be affected. I think we absolutely need to hire people. And if they're not too mad at us, probably rehire some of the people that we let go, end quote. Well, I guess the first step to regaining confidence from people that you fired is by admitting your mistake. And also, I would be looking for a pretty steep sign-on bonus if I were to even consider coming back to that company. Now, if you were part of these mass layoffs, would you even consider accepting another job offer from them? Hit me up in the comments down below. Now, we're at a point in our country's history where where one job just doesn't quite cut it. And while it's sad, you know, it's the truth. But since we're here, you know, we might as well make the best of it. There are money-making opportunities that give you the chance to generate multiple streams of income. For example, you got side hustles, you got small businesses. Those are great stepping stones to create a stronger cash flow. It's sure to help clean up debt and even give you plenty of savings. Now, if you want to protect your wealth and grow it at the same time, then maybe consider investing in things like maybe the stock market, maybe real estate, perhaps investments in precious metals like gold and silver. Now, now, if you guys would like to learn more about these topics, feel free to drop me some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. By the way, you should see some videos here and here. Make sure to click those videos and check out the next one. Now, the road to financial freedom, it's not easy, but believe me, it is possible. And before I go, guys, please don't forget to drop a like for the video and share this video with everyone you know. Subscribe for your daily dose of the truth. Appreciate you guys watching, and I'm going to catch you on the next one.